All right, thank you very much indeed for staying with us. We're now uh, turning our attention to the Nigerian currency, the Naira, and how it seemed not to be uh, able to stand, stand firmly on the ground in terms of uh, its uh, uh, competing with other currencies and, and its value, how it's been really tough for Nigerians, exchange rate, business people, people who import raw materials and all manners of things, it's been extremely difficult. As a matter of fact, as we speak, uh, we're told that the Naira is the third worst performing currency in the world. And so questions about what exactly is wrong and how can we get our Naira to be as strong as it used to be in the late 70s and in the early 80s before, you know, all of the, uh, we had a lot of money. Our problem is how to spend our money, if you remember. They say if you know, you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like it. All right. Uh, you now have joined us uh, virtually this morning, Mr. Bamidele Ayomibo. Thank you indeed, Mr. Ayomibo, rather, Mr. Bamidele Ayomibo, for joining us on this up. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Um, I'm sure that uh, you, you know, you know, growing up, I remember how my parents used to, my parents were lamenting about how come that one naira is now, I mean, one, one dollar is now two naira. What's happening to this economy? Why is this economy going so bad? I remember vividly my parents were lamenting at the time. And today we talk about uh, and over close to 2,000 naira, 170, 176, and all of that. Well, if you look back, uh, how do you feel about this, this, the, the storyline that I just narrated? Very sad, actually. Very, very sad. Um, you know, I was at an event yesterday, and I was, no, day before yesterday, and I was talking about some of the things Nigeria used to produce, uh, and I was telling them about Sanyo TV in those days. You know, that, that TV that you have closed the door, uh, and they're produced right here in Nigeria, and just talking about the same thing, and this at the time where, this was 1980, where we were producing all this stuff, in Nigeria, and as a result of that, we had all the FS coming in and less demand for FS, even though we are doing a lot of export, and that took us to where we were at that time in terms of being able to have um, that kind of value of Naira that enables us to be able to have a Naira to a dollar. At some point, Naira even been better than dollar. I remember in the Southwest, when you hear uh, there's a way that when Naira was two pounds, I mean, when, um, when Two naira was one pound. You know, you will hear the way we call it. You know, even till now, some old uh, uh, Southwest people will still call it using something pound. If you understand what I mean from Southwest, so I, I mean it's sad actually. But here is where we are, and we need to solve this problem. <laughs> yes, um, I, I, I hear me, Bo. Uh, very sad place we find ourselves uh, as a country. Uh, which is, uh, it has brought us to where we are today, uh, literally on our knees. Uh, we just finished the conversation around the exiting of multinationals uh, from Nigeria. And all of this comes with um, huge implications for the bigger economy uh, of, uh, of our country. In the, in the last two, two weeks, uh, the local currency has seen the largest fall, plunging to a record low. Uh, as at yesterday, at the end of trading yesterday, the dollar was being sold, uh, uh, was being bought at um, 1,700 1, uh, naira or thereabouts, which is a sad, a far cry from where we want to be uh, as a country. Help me understand what you think are the real issues here, because um, everything seems benchmarked on the value of uh, the naira at the moment, which is the dollar. Are we raking in enough dollar to shore up our foreign exchange um, and to, to, to ramp up our, our dollar demands? Because that in itself it seems to be like a very major uh, challenge for the value of our Naira at the moment. Um, we're not. Um, you know, I was reading the news or the report around the fact that Naira is the third world performing currency. And when I saw what the government uh, particularly, I was I saw the message of the Minister of Finance, and I noticed many people talking. Unfortunately, unfortunately, and, and you know you can perceive what the government people are doing based on what they are telling us. The focus seems to still be on food oil, and the Minister of Finance was saying that 
the sure way to grow the value of Naira is to increase the crude oil uh, production, which is not out of place. The question I'm asking is, why is it that it's only crude oil we are focusing on? Because it looks like we are not looking for other ways of solving this, this problem. We are looking at only one way. There are countries that do not have crude oil, and their currency is better than Nigeria. So why is it that we find seems to be finding it difficult or not looking at, I won't say we find it difficult, not looking at other options, just focusing on crude oil. So when I heard that Minister of Finance saying that, it then speaks to me the reason why, because I've been con concerned about the fact that nothing has been done as far as uh, non-oil export is concerned. But now hearing that again is confirming. And if you look at the IMF report, I mean the, the speech given at the a program last week that IMF official gave, he was talking about the need to diversify and the need to consider non-oil. So it, it doesn't, I can't, I don't see the action plan of the government right now on it. And the fact that the Minister of Finance is mentioning crude again shows that it doesn't appear there is a serious plan, apart from the little that NEPC is doing based on the resources he has, that the serious plan of the presidency as far as non-oil export is concerned. Right. Um, I like the fact that you have taken this conversation to the issue of diversification of the economy. And uh, maybe, just maybe, uh, I, I want to disagree because uh, over the years we have seen governments after governments talk about how they are very serious about diversifying the economy. And they, I mean, from the journal, from the, uh, from the uh, Abbasan Jolet government to, you know, to, you know, in between the Aradua, Jonathan and, and, and then you know to Buhari. There were lots of investment, particularly I remember when uh, the current um, uh, the additional, you know, was the Minister for Agriculture. You know, yeah, there was you know lots of investment. So and, and we thought that that would be sustained. So is it is it really a matter of not diversifying or making attempts to diversify the economy? Or is it that we're not being able to put in place a sustainable process? You know, to consistently earn revenues and strengthen our, our currency from other aspects of the economy apart from crude oil. Now, if we are diversifying the economy, if we are really serious about diversifying the economy, what we will be doing is different from what we are currently doing right now. What has been done in the past, you know, when you look like when you when you do things as like more like cosmetic activity not really going deeper into solving the real issue or the real problem for example if one diversifies the economy the first thing we must do i'm, I'm talking about not diversifying it towards non-oil export the first thing we must do is to let the people know increase advocacy towards export government is not the one that will do the diversification government will lead diversification and increase advocacy and then create incentives that will make businesses to take it upon themselves to take advantage of the opportunity you are providing in that space so you are saying if you invest in this sector of the economy this and this and this are what you are going to get from the government these are the tax relief these are the uh, grant these are the support you are going to get government should know the government should create the environment increase the awareness and then get businesses to begin to consider it because of what they will get. Give them a safety net. If you export and you have issue with your export, you can claim an export credit insurance. Support Nexus to be able to do that kind of export credit insurance. Increase the rate at which you guarantee their shipment. Support the same thing countries that are serious about the application is doing. So I, I'm talking about here now, in terms of non oil export, we have not done enough as far as I'm concerned. I'm putting in place, I mean, a government leader and that one coming should not stop it. Whatever you are going to do to pacify, make it a law. Create an agency. There are agents that can even handle NEPC is there, NIPC is there, Minister of Trade is there, that will be able to continue it even when the government is done. Is it's gone. So we really have not done what we really need to do. So if we really want to do it, first of all, we must increase advocacy. Nigerian businesses must begin to see the need to do it. And there must be incentive to encourage them to do it. Because they are the ones that will do the shipment. If we are going to wait for the crude oil on, it's like, and the people that are sabotaging the effort of government in crude oil knew that, oh, 
they can control the government, they can they can manipulate the government, they can influence the government decision if they deal with this particular area of the economy. And that's exactly what is happening. Why are we not looking at other areas and do what we need to do to make those areas work? You, you, you know, it's, it's uh, really, really uh, sad when you mentioned um, exports. I, I had the privilege sometime last week of looking at the guidelines uh, for, for exports and how much of um, uh, a bottleneck uh, that is being put as guidelines uh, for exports. And you begin to wonder why Nigerians are indeed not exporting. Uh, because, um, I mean, who would not want to export, uh, knowing fully well that you can generate some foreign exchange from exporting? But the bottlenecks are enormous, uh, which I think um, is something that government should also begin to look at, look at the guidelines for exports, uh, make it easier. You did talk about um, some form of subsidy or, you know, to, to, to encourage exports. Uh, however, uh, I'm very concerned about um, this issue of... Uh, uh, IMF, the uh, Nigerian government, the Central Bank of Nigeria, as long as I can remember, have often tried to support, uh, support the Naira in the FX market. Uh, then the just, just this morning we hear that the IMF is asking the federal government uh, to stop the CBN, to stop ad hoc um, auction of, uh, of, of dollar. I don't know what you think, how this would impact uh, this um, staggering, uh, very unstable market that we have right now. If the CBN stops auctioning of, uh, of the currency, how do you think this will impact the value of the Naira in the future? CBN is actually not even intervening well enough, and the reason is because they don't have enough. The reason C uh, where MF is advising them is because they need to build the reserve to be able to grow the value of Naira. That's basically why they're advising them not to do that. And But that also has its implication because that means it will also drive up inflation because shortage of FS will mean increased exchange rate. And of course, that will also drive up inflation. Cardoso job right now is not, it's not a job to be envied. It's in a very difficult place and have to take some very tough decisions to be able to achieve its objective. So IMF is advising on what they need to do. For me, you know, some of these things is like they are giving the advice because they are looking at the situation where we are in. It's just like the way they also advise that look increase in i mean diversify the economy to normal exports but while you're also ensuring you ensure you keep um money money the inflation and that would mean increasing npr like they've been doing it will mean that people are going to suffer and they are recommending look you need to create a safety net for the people so i think whatever cbn need to do to tame inflation and also to ensure that does not want the value to be done but when this is this done there's no way these are hard choices that will be made there's no way we'll make those choices and it will not affect the people. And that's why the need for safety net becomes necessary. Such that at the end of the day, support is given to the most vulnerable in society to be able to manage their um, manage themselves through this period and be able to, at the end of the day, uh, not uh, be able to at least meet their basic necessities. So what they're advising, they have a reason for it, even though I have my view about it. The real issue is CBN does not also have the enough effects to even be able to make available. In the market because of the fact that we are not exporting enough particularly the crew that we seem to be focusing on right now all right uh, thank you very much indeed uh, uh, while you are still here let's quickly bring in uh, someone else to join in this conversation dr vincent Owani uh, is an economist and investment specialist or, or, all right so uh, dr Owani, uh, thank you very much indeed uh, for joining us this morning. Thank you very much for having me. All right, so I'll, I'd like to uh, have your perspective uh, on this um, conversation around the value of the Naira and how it has been fluctuating and how it has affected businesses negatively, even individuals, people who have children abroad who have to pay school fees. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's been such a huge problem. Everyone talks about foreign exchange and the value of the Naira now. <laughs> You can't even exhaust the conversation. You know, uh, we've called it uh, the big elephant in the room. Some are calling it the hydra-headed monster. You can call it anything because, again, it has the most single uh, disproportionate impact on the socioeconomic, even the political system in Nigeria. You know, so if we want to start describing the impact of uh, fluctuation, of our of our, our, our currency, we may not leave this program, but 
uh, just to see how this um, fluctuation flows into the prices of petroleum products and how that translates to the ordinary life of Nigerians. You will agree with me that we just need to fix this problem. We just need to fix this problem. You know, because we've tried the um, um, floating of, of the FX, you know, uh, uh, a willing buyer, willing seller, the whatever you can call it, you know, allow the forces of uh, demand and supply to determine the rate. As we speak now, we don't even know the flaw. The World Bank or the IMF came out last week and said, yes, the Nigerian currency is beginning to show a sign of stability. How much that is correct, especially for those of us operating in this economy as economic agents, remains to be seen. You know, but at this rate, I'm aware that the, uh, on the street now it's over 1,700 per dollar, and the official uh, market or 1,670, you know, as at yesterday. You know, this is a price as low as uh, uh, 560 early last year, 2023. You know, so the currency have really lost value over 300 percent in the last one year. Uh, and it's having an extraordinary impact on the lives of Nigerians, be it in the payment of foreign school fees, be it in the payment of um, uh, raw material for raw materials. You know, uh, uh, companies are shutting down, you know, at an increasing rate. Few months ago, we seen so many companies, about 10, of, uh, 10 multinationals leave, that left Nigeria. You know, the two major reasons they give why they left Nigeria is that they cannot manage FX problems again. You know, some of these com companies that are left or scaled down, they've been in Nigeria over the last 100 years plus. The PZ of this world, the Unilever of this world. You know, so these companies have faced different economic challenges and business cycles in Nigeria. But this one, they can't deal with it. And we know the impact of this. You know, in one of the reports I published about two or three months ago, we were able to establish that the, uh, a, a, the exit of these companies impacted Nigeria in different ways, especially the investment or the output impact, costing us about 94 trillion over the last five years. You know, the um, uh, companies that have to shut down or scale down operation because these companies left about 600 companies, 5 million jobs at, at risk, these are the impact of the FX uh, crisis. Mm. So if multinationals have now told us, even if the IMF is telling us different things, that this is the major reasons why they are leaving the country apart from insecurity that they've been dealing with, then something needs to be done. Something needs to be done. Because of the FX challenge, we've seen inflation grew from 18% over the last uh, 18 months to 32, 34 uh, from NBS um, publication. Yeah. And we know the impact of, of inflation in the ordinary lives of Nigerians. So these are the challenges. 17 states in the north have been in darkness over the last uh, few days. And we're told that the darkness will linger over the next 14 days at the minimum. And if you ask detailed question why the darkness, you find out that the cost of the cost and the process of processes of uh, importing the uh, materials needed to revamp the transmission line is actually one of the major problems. So we can keep on counting, but the solution is simple and lies with the federal government, especially the Central Bank of Nigeria, to look at it and check whether the strategy is working and see what they can quickly tweak, because we can really not continue like this. Yeah, Dr. Vincent, I'm, 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 happy, I'm happy at where how you, how you landed the conversation that government should revisit the strategies uh, and see if it is indeed working. But from all we can see, it doesn't seem like um, um, it is a working strategy uh, within the FX, the FX market. I, I did hear that um, even the IMF, again, is asking uh, the central bank to disease from, um, uh, from its um, auction. The auction uh, it says um, it's not a sustainable uh, way to support um, the, the country's um, currency. Uh, do, do you think the Naira is getting enough support like it would need? We have tried the willing buyer, willing seller initiative. It didn't work. We have tried floating the Naira. We still cannot um, uh, find its value yet. Do, do you think the Naira is getting enough support or intervention 
that he should be getting? Or w what is the way out for you for the Naira? <laughs> you know, you are throwing the question back to me. I landed the, in my first intervention by saying that the central bank has Uh, lost um, signals there. We're hoping to reconnect with Dr. Vincent. It's important uh, we get his perspective on this, on the question I just asked him. Uh, uh, Hakim, the last caller, the last, uh, I mean, uh, Yemi Bo, did talk about the fact that um, I hope okay, it's low hanging fruit. Okay. You know, so the low hanging fruit is for um, interventions to continue to bring back the confidence in the system. Mm. You know, it is a lack of confidence in the FX market. And the financial market, a lot of arbitrage, a lot of vested interest that has continued to hit up this market. So, so what will be the strategy? What strategy are you suggesting uh, should be should be employed at the moment? The strategy, the quick win, the low hanging fruit is intermittent intervention. And we don't have because enough strategy that the past administration have used at least to keep it at a moderated. Uh, Convenient a threshold. Oh, all right. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll come back to you, uh, Dr. Wani. Uh, let me turn now back to uh, Mr. Uh, Ayemibo. Uh, the, the, the other leg of our conversation is actually uh, tax reform, you know, the proposed tax reforms that we're seeing, and I think it's already a bill. You know, after all the work that the task committee has done, and and questions about uh, what exactly is it meant to achieve, and some people, particularly northern governors, traditional uh, rulers uh, from that axis, are rejecting you know some provisions of that uh, bill. I mean, the tax reform bill. Uh, what do you make of um, the introductions that we're seeing in the new bill and you know the tax reform that have been proposed by this government? All right, um, I think the major challenge is the fact that um, taxes in Nigeria, this, the tax net in Nigeria is not yet wilding enough. Uh, increasing tax on people who are already paying is what I don't think should be done. I think it's a lot, lot better, which is what we are trying to do, is to ensure that we extend the tax net to those that are not currently paying, yeah, which is the whole essence of having, uh, what what having yeah. the name, having the uh, the BVN, so there are not um, data available to be able to check and be able to know who are those that are not currently paying taxes and get them to pay, rather than increasing the taxes. It's just like the issue we have with, uh, with the um, with the petroleum product. I mean, removal of subsidy in which petroleum products have been moved across the border to other parts of the country. Now, to other part of the to other countries rather, and it's like we are subsidizing other countries. Now, rather than the government stopping that, we remove subsidy, which some other country will do for their people, reducing the impact of inflation on, on their people because of what subs and because they give them subsidy. Now, so the government removed it because they could not solve that problem. And but the reason for voting politician into office is for them to be able to help to solve the problem. So rather than transferring the, I'm not able to solve problems you, I hire you to solve, then I'm suffering for not being able to, for you not being able to do the job you hire to do. That's I, the way I see this, and the increasing taxes at this point is not the best for us as a nation, rather to widen tax net to get those that are not paying to be able to um, begin to pay. That I think is a better way to go. Uh, uh, I've, also, I've also been an advocate for the fact that um, Given to, give to the fact that many Nigerians are falling below the poverty line, this whole conversation around taxes, taxes could mean tax, taxing poverty, uh, which will be, which will amount to almost, um, almost zero. But uh, the feelers I get is that um, all the proposals being put forward by uh, the fiscal committee on taxes, uh, of the opinion that um, the poor should be let, let off the hook of tax, of taxes, uh, while focus will be on um, the elites. Uh, to increase taxes on luxury goods and all of that. Uh, but then, uh, let, let's look at this whole new uh, uh, der derivation model uh, for VAT distribution in the new tax bill, uh, which um, governors in the North are uh, uncomfortable with. Uncomfortable with. Uh, boy, help me understand what the tax um, process is like right now in terms of um, the VAT and how it is being shared across, across states, across the federation. 
and what this derivative uh, policy hopes to achieve. Because, I mean, a lot of people have the opinion that there's lack of equity in the, in the sharing formula uh, for VAT. So I didn't get a question. Okay, so let's, let's look at the whole... Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? I can. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, so there is a yes, bill. Yes, yes, yes. There is a bill proposing a, a derivation a, a model for VAT. Uh, it's in the house right now. Talking about distribution of the new, the new VAT, uh, the new VAT bill, which uh, northern governors are, are are crying foul about. I don't know if you are aware, if you have an understanding of that bill at the moment. Help us understand why they are crying foul. Oh, because if you use the derivation principle, it's going to be a challenge for states where they are not getting back. You know, a number of state governors currently budgeted based on what they expected, looking at what they got the previous year. So, but if you look at the derivation principle, it means it mean that I'm going to only get a share of VAT based on the amount coming from my, uh, my state in terms of percentage contribution from my state. The implication of that is, if you are going to do that, maybe we should give some time, maybe two, three years, so that it's easier for them to plan. Because if I already get this amount of income last year, and based on the what is what I projection, we're expecting this amount this year, and we're budgeted based on it, and then you are going to change it, that might be a challenge. For that, that will be a challenge definitely on, on, on them. And the fact that they are already budgeted based on this. But the fact is that, in my opinion, it's a good way to go because it will help them to develop their economy and eventually be able to generate more tax in those states. But, but that should not be, probably give you a little more time so that they can also work towards increasing whatever they need to do in their state to be able to increase economic activity and not be able to get uh, those taxes. But because they already have planned towards this money, that will be a challenge. And that's exactly what I think is happening right now. Uh, let me turn to uh, Dr. Wani, uh, because I'm particularly interested in uh, the aspect you know that talks about uh, some kind of increase in the vat for luxury goods uh, so and, and i think that's quite uh, that makes some sense isn't it because if you if you yeah. ask yourself a lot of nigerians really can't afford basic things now i mean for those who can afford that and then go the extra mile for luxury goods they should pay a little more doesn't that make sense uh, yes it makes sense behind the envelope <laughs> On the academic level, it makes perfect sense. You know, but implementation, is it possible? Can the IFRS implement all of this? They already overstretched um, in implementing our task laws and regulation that we roll out every day. You know, the cost of task collection in Nigeria uh, by, uh, by the revenue, you know, that's the uh, cost of collection um, ratio by revenue is one of the highest in the world. So, can they implement it? The goods in Nigeria are they codified such that you'll be able to trace the traceability. Just removal of uh, import duty on food, you know, and food importation. Uh, up till now, six months going, the uh, 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 Nigerian customs have not been able to cred uh, credibly implement that policy, you know. Um, tax have been tax have been removed from uh, CNG and uh, oil and gas equipment recently, you know, and we are now going into um, not taxing uh, goods consumed by the poor and taxing goods that uh, luxury goods. What are luxury goods? Where are they codified? So the implementation will take time. I'm not sure if we have the type of office or the institution that can implement that. But whatever on the academic level is quite uh, an impressive. Uh, uh, an impressive uh, 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 proposal. It's a proposal at this stage. I'm talking about uh, the northern part of the country kicking against uh, the new tax uh, movement by ensuring that you take as much as you bring to the table, which is just another part of fiscal federal, uh, federalism. You know, that will spur people to do a bit more. You know, but like uh, Dr. Uh, my friend um, uh, Yanobo said, Probably they may need, need time, but that is actually the destination to go. Thank you. All right, uh, Dr. Vincent. Um, the, the, we've had some um, we've had some concerns around um, some states' legislature. I mean, some states' um, 
governments actually uh, contesting contesting the initial uh, VAT uh, position. We've had River State contest that, and that has given River State some kind of leverage uh, to manage its uh, its its, um, its um, VAT uh, going forward. Uh, do, do you do you think that um, this new derivative derivation uh, uh, proposal uh, will them um, indeed encourage um, company? I mean, I mean, states to begin to look inwards, uh, begin to uh, produce because primarily you and I understand what the issues are with the north around this um, VAT. Uh, most of the, the the largest chunk of the VAT collection comes from um, uh, VAT on alcohol. On alcohol, and in the northern part of Nigeria, it is uh, a no-no that um, even though we hear that some people do, but they against their religious uh, positioning, they don't they don't take alcohol. So how, how else can they ramp up VAT um, in the north to be able to stand at par with other parts of the country? Sharing mm. formula. It remains to be seen now. You know the. You know, the basis for VAT is about productivity and consumption. You know, and if you even look at uh, GDP contribution by states, you know, um, you find out that the Southwest, especially Lagos, uh, somewhere in the, in the South, 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 you know, in, in river states will take a chunk. I, I don't have the data, but as an analyst, I will believe that 60 plus percent of VAT revenue generated will be coming from Lagos and, and, and River State. And, and maybe Abuja, if you add these three, we we'll have well over that 60 or 70 percent. You know, so the moral justice should suggest that the VAT revenue or tax revenue collected from where it's collected are allowed to benefit more from those states. But these are the challenges of um, running a false federalism where everybody come to the center, pick, go back, spend, and come back and pick again. You know, I think we've answered the question eloquently in uh, the first intervention by saying that this is the way to go. All the political maneuver and negotiation have to happen behind the scene, but actually that is the destination to go. Of course, there are some moral implications. People will say, ah, Lagos, uh, is it not uh, federal infrastructure that has contributed to output revenue and they're getting a lot of a lot of people to be able to pay these VAT. The same thing in River State, the same thing in uh, Northern Nigeria. Have you done that for Sokoto? Have you done that for Abia or Ibony State? You know, so that is why I say that this has to be reduced to some political maneuver, but that is the destination to go. All right. Thank you very much indeed. We have to go now. We've been speaking with um, Mr. Bamidele Ayemibo, who is an international business development uh, trade and finance expert. Thank you very much indeed for your time on the show. And also we've had uh, Dr. Vincent Wani, who is an economist and investment uh, specialist. Thank you very much indeed, uh, gentlemen, for your time on the show today. Thank you very All right, much. Thank you very much. Mr. Vincent, bye-bye.